Welcome to another video. This problem requires that you use a given function to find the value of the derivative of the inverse of that function at a given point. I say that again. You're given f of x, but you're not looking for the derivative of f. You're looking for the derivative of the inverse of f at a point you're given. The most important thing for you to realize about functions and their inverses is that the output of the function is the input of the inverse. And the output of the inverse is the input of the original function. So know how to use this three because this is what you need to get this guy. Let's get into the video. If this is your first time hearing about this concept of the derivative of the inverse of a function, you need to watch this video. I'll leave the link in the description. Now, there is a connection between a function and the derivative of its inverse at a point. And this is the connection. Let's just write it. We know that if you want to find the derivative of the inverse of a function at a given point A, it is basically the reciprocal of the derivative of the function itself, the original function, evaluated at a point. Now, how do we get that point? Well, you just have to say, what did I plug into the original function? What did I plug into the original function to give me this a? So, this is a number, not a function. Okay? So, now... Let's connect it to this so you can understand what basically is happening. If you plug in something into this function, it's going to give you 3. What is that thing you plugged in? Because we need it. That's what we're saying here. If you plug something into this function to get 3, if you want to get that thing back, go plug this back into the inverse function. Let's look at, look at this analysis. So if we say that f of x is equal to y, what did I plug in to f in order to get y? I don't know. So the only way I can get that x back is to plug this y into the inverse function. Take the inverse of y. It is the same thing as taking the inverse of f of x. And we know that this will undo this and you're going to get your x back. So this guy has to go back in here. And that's it. And the formula connecting them, you can, this, you can prove either using um, the definition of the derivative or use the chain rule on the relationship of the inverse function. Okay, that works also. I've done that in the previous video that I talked about. So here, all I need is to find this number and I need to find the derivative of f. I don't need to know what the inverse function is or the derivative of the inverse function because they're connected in this way. So let's ask the most important thing. What did you plug in to this function to get 3? Start thinking. Remember, guessing is a good game. Start by plugging in zero, then switch the number, try with the numbers close to zero on the number line. You'll eventually find out that one is your best friend. And then you just take the derivative. So, three things we need to do. Firstly, recall the formula. Secondly, find the value of x for which the output of f of x will be three. And thirdly, just plug it in. Oh, we need to find the derivative of f of x. <laughs> okay, let's do that. So this is how I'm going to go about this one because of the special nature of this. Let's say I have um, f of x is equal to the square root of x cubed plus 4x plus 4, and the output is going to be 3. So the question is, what did we plug in here to get this? So what I would do is square both sides. 
If I square both sides, I'm going to have x cubed plus 4x plus 4 equals 9. Okay, let's minimize the guess. I'm going to move this 4 over, so I have x cubed plus 4x will be equal to 5. So now, start plugging in numbers. You could have started, you could have done that immediately, depending on how good, how good your guessing game is. So here, you got, put 0 here, put 0 here, definitely you won't get 5. If you put 1 here, you put 1 here, oh, that's it. We don't need to keep guessing. Just trying 1 tells you that 1 was the original number plugged into the function that gave us 3. And that 3 became the input of the inverse function. So we're good. So here we can go here and say by inspection. That's what we say. Inspection. Inspection. Okay. <laughs> A is equal to 1. And that's it. The only other thing we need is the derivative of f because it is the derivative of f at a point. We found what our point is going to be. That you see, this is what you call one. Okay, so here we're going to say um, f of x equals the square root of x cubed plus 4x plus 4, which means it is x cubed plus 4x plus 4 to the 1 half. So now we can find f prime of x. It's going to be 1 half of x cubed plus 4x plus 4 to the negative 1 half multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 3x squared plus 4. Okay. Ah. So, what is the formula that we have? It is right here. What we're looking for, the derivative evaluated at this point, is 1 over the, this derivative evaluated at this point. It's just simple. So, we know that f inverse of f, the derivative of f inverse at 3, if you write it this way, is basically 1 over f prime evaluated at 1. That's it. That's, that what, that's what we're saying. Okay, let's evaluate this. So this is going to be 1 over, we're going to evaluate this when x is equal to 1. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to plug in 1 as I write the derivative, okay? So this is going to be 1 half over times 1 cubed plus 4 times 1 plus 4 raised to power 1 half sorry negative 1 half negative 1 half I know you want me to simplify but I don't have to since I am evaluating it doesn't matter so this is going to be equal to multiplied by 3 times 1 squared plus 4 okay see the magic number show up now this is going to be 1 plus 4 plus 4. What's that? That's 9. Okay, so this is 1 over 1 half of 9 to the negative 1 half. I'm just going to leave it that way. Multiplied by, what number is this? This is 3 plus 4. That's 7 times 7. So, by the time we do all our, remember, this is... 9 to the negative 1 half is 1 over 3. And now I want to write my final answer. I'm going to change this to 1 third. Okay. It's times 1 over 3. So right here in the denominator, I have 7 over 6, which when flipped will become 6 over 7. 6 over 7 is the derivative. The most important part was the formula you need to recall or memorize in case you never learned it. You need to know how to find x from a. No, by inspection, it's not a, it's x that's equal to 1. Come on. <laughs> x is equal to 1, and that x equal one, equals 1 is our f inverse of a. This is the same thing as f inverse of a 
Yeah. Okay. And then use the formula and get your answer. Never stop learning. Because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.